Is your heart ready? Okay. So I'm done with that. All righty. Turn to Turn to page uh, 14. We know that we are all different women. We know that our styles are different. We know if I go to Petey's house, her decorations and her style of decoration is different than mine. Uh, you know, because we are different and our likes are different. We are all different. But yet at the same time, we are women. We're the same. Although, but all those styles differ, there are certain elements that, that all good designs have in common. I am on page 14. I'm going to start from the last paragraph. Are you there? Page 14. Okay. Let's look at the sidebar where it says, A true woman is characterized by right thinking. She knows what accords with sound doctrine. What does that mean? She knows what accords with sound doctrine. What does that mean? A, per, a woman that is a true woman of God. Oh, my books. Who has the books? Do you know where the books are? I, all my people that help me are sick and they're not here, so I'm lost. Uh, they might be in my car. Yes, you're going to need the key. Okay. <laughs> okay, now where's the keys? Isn't he? <laughs> oh. oh, these are the wrong keys. <laughs> In the little pocket, in the okay. little pocket, no, in this little pocket. Right okay. Here. No. No. It's probably on the table in the back somewhere. Or. Let's see. Yeah, it's probably on the table. I, I lose my keys all the time. Oh. No, I get an object lesson. <laughs> an object lesson. An object lesson. Did you, anybody find my keys anywhere? Who knows, Mama? <laughs> Anybody see any keys? Any? Oh, you know what there could be? In my office. But I think it's open. On top of the table because I was praying. All of them. My, they're not here. They're all. My, 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 my daughter last night was, got severely sick. And she was throwing up all night and all day today, so she wasn't going to be here. And then Lorena calls it. I'm not going to be here because I'm. She was here, no problem. We, but no. And then my uh, granddaughter that takes attendance and does the PowerPoint isn't here because she has. She's going to a vet college for veterinarian, and um, and she had to go fill out some papers and, and do an interview today, so she couldn't be here. So I'm all by myself. <laughs> so just be patient with me because Father is the one that does everything. Amen? One, two. Nothing happened. One, two. Nothing happened. One, two. Nothing happened. Hmm? One, two. I don't know. I already told you that I wasn't. I wasn't on. Okay. One, two. I told you that I didn't do anything, know nothing about technology. And you have to put, to, you have to push it twice, she said. Uh, you collect the money. Yeah, the books are the books are the books are twelve dollars. Just give the money to uh, Rose if you have it today. Fine. If not, bring it next week. Okay. Twice. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. There you go. Okay. Okay. You know, aside of all these technology, it's only five minutes after seven. I was supposed to start at seven. Five minutes isn't too bad. Okay, Mija, just did everybody get a book now? Everybody has a book? Page 14. Discernment. Okay, got it? Page 14, right on the margins of the book where it says, A true woman is characterized by, the, the, by right thinking. She knows what accords with sound doctrine. Accords with sound doctrine, it means that a true woman of God, a woman of God that knows the word, knows, accord means agrees or lines up to the word of God. That's what it means. So a true woman of God when, cannot be deceived easily because they know the word. So they can't be deceived easily. Right in the last paragraph of page 14, I'm going to only pick out, because it's a big list, and I'm going to pick out only the main points. The rest is just stories that they tell that you could read at home if you want. Okay? Okay, but all those styles differ. There are certain elements that all good designs have in common. Um, designer shoes and arranged flooring, wall treatments, lighting, window treatments, furniture, and accessories according to their color, texture, line, form, and space. These are the critical elements of every design. So remember when I said before that uh, you have a piece at home, a beautiful piece, when you're redesigning your home, you put the beautiful piece wherever it's going to be, but you're going to put all the rest of the design to complement that one piece. Remember when I said Jesus is the center of this temple, is the center of this house, and all our behavior, all our attributes, all our, our um, attitudes and character should, should complement the center who is Jesus. Your character, your attitude, all that should complement Jesus the character of Jesus, if Jesus is living in you. Amen? Amen? It should. I don't want you to start getting condemned or anything, okay? Convicted, yes, but not condemned. But I'm going to tell you something. I don't know about you, but when I decor my house, I start with that beautiful piece, and then I buy another item. And then I, I save a little bit more, and then I buy another item. I save a little bit more, and then I buy another item. And you know why? Because I don't have the money to do the whole thing all at one time. We go from glory to glory. We change from one thing to another to another. We don't, everybody doesn't know everything. You have to grow. You have to learn, and you have to grow, Right? Okay, go to one, go to on the uh, page 15 where it says women are about around half of the page. Okay, up there is this just a story and stuff. You could read that uh, later on at home. It says women are instru instructed to be reverent, to love their spouses and children, to exercise self exercise self control, to be pure and kind, to be devoted to their homes. To, and to submit to God ordained, to God ordained authority. Yet men are, are how do you say that word? Thank you. I know what it means, but I, I can't pronounce it. Need to learn these things too. Men are instructed to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, in love, and in steadfastness. Yet women need to learn these things too. So why the sex-specific list? In other words, okay, why did Paul tell Titus that women should behave one way and then tell the men that they should behave this way when the men could use some of the way we behave too and the women could use some of what the men too? The reason he did that is because we are different than they are. Remember, we are the softer. We are the sensitive ones. They're not. 
they are the more the more rugged ones. So that's why, because he gave us our adornment that's going to surround Jesus according to the females that we are. Okay. Watch it start up by itself. <laughs> we need to have the answer. Okay. Okay. Why not, why not lump everything together under one big category of important stuff for Christians to learn? The reason for the differing list is that men and women are different. As we learned in True Woman 101, Paul's list counteracted our sex-specific sin tendencies. In other words, we sin differently too and, and point us back to our divine design. So although discernment is important for both men and women, there are specific applications of sound doctrine that are particularly directed to and important for each gender to understand. We have to remember, men and women are not the same. We are not. I don't care what the world tries to tell you. We are not the same. We don't even think the same. We don't even think the same. We're different. And if we understand who we are and we understand who they are, we'd get along a lot. My husband and I are getting along. I said, my gosh, why in the world did I not know this when I first got married? <laughs> my goodness, you young ladies, pay attention. If you're single, pay attention. Because you're going to learn. From there is going to come a honey. You're going to know how to take care of him. You're going to know what to, sp uh, what to look for. You're going to have a, you're going to have a fantastic chance. According to Paul, right thinking leads to right living. If you think about womanhood, if you think about womanhood isn't shaped and by sound doctrine, chances are you're not going to live in a way that pleases the Lord. So if you think, no, no, I'm not going to go this way. I'm going to go the way the world says because that makes more sense. I'm sorry. The world didn't create you. The world is not the author of your life. Discern, uh, um, discernment grounded in clear understanding of God's word is the first critical element in true womanhood. I'm going to read that again. Discernment grounded in a clear understanding of God's word is the first critical element in true womanhood. I'm going to tell you a story right here. Turn your page to, to 16. There, I'm, going to, I'm going to tell you the story because it'll take too long to read it. There was this nurse that worked in this hospital, and she started getting sick. And then uh, she went to the management and told the management, hey, I'm getting sick. There's something wrong. You, we have to check something. There's something wrong in this hospital. They didn't listen to her. So more people started getting, get, getting sick. They didn't listen to her. And then a little six-year-old girl died. Then they started paying attention. So they called in the health people, and they checked everything. Well, in all the vents, there was a whole lot of black mildew. And so thick that everybody was breathing it in. They didn't know it. They just they they couldn't smell it. They could nothing. It just was there. But they were breathing it in, and they got them sick. And the bottom, that last little paragraph, the apostle Paul wanted to make sure that the churches on the island of Crete provided a spiritual, healthy environment for uh, fledglings, in other words, new believers or young believers or in, um, in the Lord. He wanted to make sure they were breathing spiritually healthy air. Look, at the, look in the margins. Let's go to the top one. It says in, in uh, Titus 1.9, he must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also to rebuke those who contradict it. In other words, we have to teach the young ones the word of God so they can become strong. 
And in turn, they're going to teach others. And we have to know the word of God soundly and strongly because we're going to be, have to be able to speak love into the people that contradict it. Because you can't really contradict the truth. The truth is the truth. You really can't contradict it. The second one, but as for you, teach with accordance with sound doctrine, Titus 2.1. T- because why? Why? Why do we need to teach with sound doctrine? We need to teach with sound doctrine because if we teach any other way, we're going to give them unhealthy air to breathe. So that every, uh, uh, Titus 2.10 to 10, so that everything they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in everything. Um, right here in the bottom where it says, oh, we, we did it already. Okay, now I'm going to go right to the next page, 17, where it says it's important because all these other questions on the top, they're just for you. It's, it's private. It's just like say, what comes to your mind when you hear the word doctrine? How would you? All that is homework. You do that at home. Because if we do it here, we're not going to make it. We, we, we will never get done. So go to the, where it says it's important to understand. It's important to understand that the doctrine isn't something reserved for theological, the theological elite. In other words, the doctrine or the, the word of God is not just for the, for the brainy people, obviously. Look at me. The word simply means teaching. That's all the word doctrine means. It's teaching. A doctrine is a set of beliefs, and everyone has one. Everyone sitting in this room, everyone walking on this earth has a belief. Atheists have a doctrine. For example, the famous evolutionary biologist Richard uh, Dawkins believes the Bible should not be taught as reality. It is fiction, myth, poetry, anything but reality. That is his doctrine. Oprah Winfrey used her multi-award winning talk show to teach her doctrine of self-improvement, church-free spirituality, and guilt-free sexuality to millions of women each day. She believed that she believed in the spirits, but each one could have whatever spirit they want. And she didn't believe that you have to be married to have sex. You, you, how else are you going to know your husband? You could, if, you don't, if you have sex with this guy, you don't like him, you go have sex with another one. You don't like it, you could go have sex with another one. You don't like it, you could go have sex with another one. That's her belief. That was her belief. In the bottom, the teaching you believe determines the way you live. Paul knew that believers in Crete would undoubtedly have and follow a doctrine. But he was concerned about what kind of doctrine they were going to teach, believe, and practice. Not any kind of doctrine would do. Paul was concerned that their doctrine would be sound doctrine. In other words, Paul was concerned. He wanted the doctrine that he taught to remain the same. He didn't want to change. Turn the page, please. (coughs) Sound doctrine. From the top. Like the word doctrine, the word sound is also reoccur- a reoccurring theme in the book of Titus. Sound essentially means healthy. That's all. Sound doctrine means healthy doctrine. Sound mind means to have a healthy mind. We're going to go into what a healthy mind is. The Greek word for sound I- is uh, hygiano, which is close to hygiene. You could hear the G, the G. Hygiene in there is closely related to the to our word for hygiene. Sound doctrine is doctrine that is free from contamination. It's pure. It's wholesome. It is that which makes peop- sick people well. When you are depressed and you are uh, walking with anxiety and you're walking in darkness and depression and in loneliness, all that it, because. If you stop and listen to the world and the ways of the world, you're going to walk like that. See how the world is around you. You're going to walk like that. And some doctrine, when you start getting healthy, healthy teaching in you, you're going to start developing 
a different viewpoint. You're going to start believing. You are what you believe. When you start believing, you start behaving differently. It's, it's like I told you about uh, the sister that glowed. She heard the word, received the word, and it changed her. It changed her. Our culture is obsessed with physical health and soundness. It advises us to avoid junk food, read labels, shop in whole food stores, and pay more for organic foods. As a result, many people watch what they eat. But sadly, most are utterly unconcerned about their spiritual consumption. They are unaware that they are ingesting a lot of contaminated, unhealthy ideas. Sun doctrine is healthy. It's pure, uncontaminated, and free from air. It's like breathing clean, fresh air. Unsound doctrine is a mixture of truth and air. Do you remember the garden, Satan? He used a mixture of truth and air. He's still doing that. That's what rules this world, a mixture of truth and air. And that's what we have. That's why we need to be able to discern, to set apart. It's like breathing the, in air that's tinted with a dangerous contaminant. You may not smell or notice the toxin, but it's inevitable and it will negatively impact your impact your health unsound doctrine leads to spiritual sick and weak believers which lead to spiritual unhealthy churches i'm going to read that again unsound doctrine in other words beliefs that are not healthy leads to spiritual sick and weak believers that's why we see a lot of believers that do not walk in victory They don't walk in victory because they're not receiving healthy teachings. Which leads to spiritual unhealthy churches. Now, in, next is, is in the verse, in the margin, put the box around, um, put a box around the word you sound. Well, that's homework, okay? So we're going to go to the next page. Do you know what your doctrine is? Do you care? Do you know what your beliefs are? Do you even care about them? Are you sure? Are you sure that you care? We're going to see how much you care. Have you evaluated doctrine on your favorite TV shows or the books and magazines you read? Have you evaluated what you're being taught about womanhood? When you see the TV shows, and you see how the women are portrayed, how the women portray themselves. That is teaching you doctrine. You are being taught, believe it or not, even with commercials, with ads, <coughs> with magazines, with books, your mind is constantly taking in knowledge. It's constantly being taught. Do we know that what we're being taught is clean, fresh, <coughs> or is it contaminated? Have you seen the commercials of a big, juicy Carl Jr.'s hamburger? <laughs> the hamburger is fantastic. The hamburger is good. But look what they mix that with. A woman, seductive, and you're taking that in. So that's what I'm saying. Are we sure? Of the books and magazines you read, do you read romance n uh, novels? Do you re read romance? Uh, there's there's used to be books of romance. I don't, I don't remember what they were called. Well, I can see you guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay now <laughs> okay yes but you know what I'm saying I'm going to get to that a little bit later have you evaluated what you're being taught about womanhood because every time you hear 
or see an advertisement or watch a TV, computer, movie screen, or listen to the lyrics of a song, or read an article or a book, or listen to your girlfriend chatter about the exploits. In other words, you got girlfriends, young ladies at school, and you're hearing them say, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, uh uh-huh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, we tried it last night. Oh, you know what happened? For the very first time, this happened. And you know what happened? And and you, the unexperienced, are listening to that. You are training your young mind. Mm -hmm. You are taking in unhealthy doctrine. Mm -hmm. And that goes to you older single ladies unhealthy doctrine or catch up on the latest happenings on your facebook or social network are you breathing in doc are you breathing in doctrine and it's and it's important to consider consider whether the doctrine is sound you are being taught all the time everywhere i'm going to i'm going to go into a little bit of my notes because as I was doing this, this is what I was getting. You're, it's going to sound a little bit the same, but I'm going to put what I ge- was getting out of it, what was coming to me. Because I, this is where I said, remember how I said I got humbled? Mm-hmm. Because when I was doing this, I got humbled because I got scolded real bad. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expound on what I just said. Sound doctrine. What is your doctrine? Do you know? Do you care? Have you paid attention and discern or evaluate the beliefs of what your TV shows and, and books and magazines you read? What is it teaching your soul about who you are as a woman? Because every time you see or hear an advertisement or watch TV, computer, movie screen, or listen to the lyrics of a song, you read an article or a book or listen to your friends talk about the things they are doing or experimenting on or discovering for the first time or catch up on the latest happenings on Facebook and other social networks, you are breathing in doctrine. You are being taught. You are either breathing in healthy doctrine or toxic doctrine. Here it comes. If you have a problem with lust, are you watching TV with love making in it? With hot and heavy petting? And you wonder why you're always having less thoughts in your mind? Because after you stop seeing the movie or whatever tech device, book, or magazine you're using, the thoughts will still remain in living color, clear pictures in your mind. I know, forgive me, it's tough, but I'm going to say it. Thoughts will lead you to sin. Thoughts that will eventually be so strong that you will act those thoughts out and commit fornication or adultery. But who did it? You. Me. If you have a problem with gluttony, why are you looking at cooking channels? After you're done watching, you're so hungry... You cook up a great meal for four, and you eat the whole meal yourself, (laughs) all of it. Why torture yourself? If you have a problem, I'm serious. I know it sounds funny, but it's deadly serious because it's killing you. It's killing you. Why? 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 Because we don't know. We don't know how to, we don't know how to um, align doctrine with sound doctrine. We don't know how to do that. We're going to learn tonight, but we don't know how to do that. We don't know how to say, wait a minute, that's wrong, and stop. We're going to know how to do that. If you are lonely, why, why, why? Are you looking at romance movies? 
After you turn the TV, you sit there feeling sorry for yourself. You're all alone. You have no one. Pray and ask Father to send you a honey. And you make yourself all depressed. And you walk around with a little dark cloud raining on you. Everywhere you go. And if you keep that up, you will become so familiar with depression and darkness that it will become a part of who you are, a part of your nature, giving Father no mind. And by that, I'm saying people will come and tell you, you the word says this, the word says that, the word says this, but you're so familiar with that darkness, you're so familiar, it's a part of your nature, that you don't give the word any mind. In other words, it comes, you listen to it, but it doesn't go in. And you remain in the same place. Why? If you're lonely, why are you, why if, if, are you looking at these romance things? It's only going to make you lonelier. It's only going to want you to, oh, I'm all by myself. No, cut that out. Cut it out. Learn to discern. Learn to discern the things of the world that are creeping in to destroy your soul. Because that's what they're fighting for. They're fighting for your soul. Learn to discern. Is it too heavy for you guys? <laughs> it is so important to evaluate whether or not that which you are taking in, that which you are teaching yourself, is sound doctrine or not. It is your choice. Amen? Amen. We can try to justify and try to reason out why we don't get in the word or study or and here's where I re it really got me. Why most of us don't get in because we say we don't have time. The time I come from home from work and do, because I know that I don't work, but I do work. It takes me hours to study. It takes me a couple of days just to put everything together. I work. I am fortunate enough to work in this instead of, you know what I'm saying? Because some of you work out in the world and say, no, by the time I come home from work and do all the other things I have to do, it's too late. I have to work the next day. I come home. I have to put the load in the wash. I have to wash dishes. I have to make food. I have to clean the house. And then, oh, it's time to go to bed. The next day you wake up and do the same old, same old. And next day you wake up and do the same old, same old. And where is your study time? Do you, okay, oh, well, I have five minutes left. I could go a little reading, five minutes. Okay, well, I'm going to study. And I'm going to sing in the car. I'm going to worship in the car. I'm going to talk to you in the car. No, no, I'm sorry, no. He is the king. He is Lord sovereign. He deserves more than that. Don't you think? I have a quick and easy solution. I believe it's a father God. I truly do. It's going to sound weird. It's going to sound silly, but I believe it's from him. It's basically telling you. And you don't have to stop anything you are doing now. If you say, oh man, what are you going to give me? This guilty? No, you don't have to stop anything that you're doing now. You can still continue doing the same day, same day. You don't have to stop nothing. Just do a little switcheroo. Give the time that you spend on watching TV, your phone or iPhone or on Facebook to reading and studying the word. And give the time that you use for reading and studying the word to Facebook and everything else. It's very easy. It's a switcheroo. Isn't it simple? Because if you have time to sit down and watch the tube, if you have time to be on that, if you have time to be playing all these games for hours, do a switcheroo. Give all that time to him and the time that you use for the Bible study every day, give that one to the tube. Doesn't, wouldn't that work? It's just a switcheroo. You don't have to change anything. Are you willing to do that? 
Are we willing to do that? Wow. I got convicted. I really did. I really did. And I went to my husband and I sat down and I said, you know what? That really, really, really showed me something here. I'm learning that everywhere I go, everything that I'm seeing, it's teaching me. I'm learning that everything that I see on TV, everything that comes in my ears, it's teaching me. This is your heart. This is the heart of who you are. It's teaching you. We have to be able to discern what's going on in here, to what's coming in. We have to be able to discern it. Let us realize, recognize what we are doing. Discern the times that we're living in. Be awakened by the true teacher. You have been born. You've been placed here on this earth. You are here in church for such a time as this. You have been born. You have been placed on this earth. You're walking around here. And you are here tonight to hear this, to awaken you, to open your eyes to the truth. He is the revealer of the truth. And he's going to reveal the truth to you. And he's telling you, watch out. Especially in these days. Everything around us is sexually perverted. Everything. Everything. Before you were able to sit down and watch a good movie with it, not worrying about a commercial. At least you didn't have to worry about a commercial. Now the commercials are porn. You look at a commercial, they're porn. That is porn. And we're watching all that. If we, his daughters, the king's daughters, don't stand up for the truth of who we are as women and the purpose of our existence, to expose the lies that are destroying our beauty as the highest creation the creator himself created, because that's who we are. We are the highest creation that he created. We are beautiful to him. We're beautiful, and we're allowing the world to destroy us and make us ugly. Let us discern and the plumb line with the word, all we see and hear. Breathe healthy, sound doctrine. Amen? Amen? That really spoke to me. It really did. Really did. It made me open my eyes. It made me realize I, I didn't know. I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention. Because what does he do? He slides in very, very subtle. He told Eve, he didn't say that you would die. No. Just, yes, he did. He said that, and they did. He said that we were going to die, and they did die. And they died that day. In the bottom, right here, it's also homework. Okay. Uh, here where it says ladies, it says, in Titus 2, Paul outlines the Lord's ex ex expert design for women. The basis for the de that design is sound doctrine. Sound doctrine is healthy, wholesome, and beneficial. Do you believe that? Yes, I do. If we look right here in the margin, where it's in the orange margin, it says, What does the Lord God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God. What does that word fear mean? We studied it Saturday. Reverence. To go before him confidentially, but with reverence. To fear the Lord your God. To walk in all his what? Ways. In all your ways. In all the world's ways. In all his ways. And he's going to show you his ways. We're going to study each one individually. To love him. To serve the Lord your God with all your what? 
What is that? Serve him with all of it. Give him your thoughts and your feelings. And with all your what? Soul. What part of that is it? That's the part that has, that's the part that makes the decisions. That's the part that has a conscience. Good or wrong. Give him that. And to keep the commandments and statutes of the Lord, which I am commanding you today for your good. For whose good? Your good. Everything that we're going to study from now on, it's going to get a little heavy, ready, but that's all right. It's okay. You're gonna, you're, it's going to hurt a little bit. It's going to make us feel a little uncomfortable. That's okay. Don't quit coming because that's what this is for, to wake you up, to make you realize certain things, to understand, oh, maybe that's why I can't get this done. Oh, my goodness, maybe that's why I've been feeling like this. Why? Because he's telling us. He's showing us how to do it. He's going to show us even better. Day two, the plumb line. This here, and I'm going to tell you a story because it, it, it's, it, when I was reading her story, I started laughing because I went through the same thing, so I'm going to tell you my story. Same thing as hers. When my daughter, when I was pregnant with my daughter, I was fixing the nursery. Oh, making it all pretty and pink. Not, my daughter hates pink. But anyway, it was I was in charge. So I put pink and real pretty pink um, wallpaper and everything. And I started, I put the first, the first one up as, as straight. I put it up. Oh, I said, turn back. Oh, that's going to look good. Then I put the other one up. Okay. And then I got the other one up, and I realized that they weren't measuring well. In the bottom, they were going higher, higher, higher. Well, I didn't know <laughs> that you had to use a plumb line. What this is, they hook it up, you hook it up to the ceiling and you let it hang. And when, when, when it starts moving, when it stops moving, because this is, a, they, put, they, they put like color on it. And when it stops moving, when it stops moving, uh, you, it will be the exact straight from the ceiling to the floor. So then you get it and you pull on it. You have someone holds it and you pull on it and it leaves a line, a color line. And then you put the wallpaper following that one. You get the other one, you do the same thing and you use a plumb line. And then it starts flowing because you use the plumb line, the guide. Okay, now <laughs> my sister... <laughs> Rose, <laughs> we always joke about the bubble level. <laughs> One time, she, that's the kind they call her the thorn. That's why her nickname is the thorn. We were coming, and Brother Mike, for you that attend our church, Brother Mike, you know, you know, Brother Mike has a little. And then she passed by, and, she, and, he, and I have one too. He passed, she's passed by, and she said, "Hey, you're on the level, brother." <laughs> The devil has a bubble. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, when we go camping and we set up our trailer, we always have to take a level so th and put it inside on the floor. Well, not this one, but another one, a big one, on the floor. So when my husband lit down the trailer, if the, if the bubble is either way, that means it's not level. So we have to move it to where the bubble stays right in the middle. That's, that means it's all level, okay? It's the plumb line. It's called a plumb line. Or some of it call it the spirit line. Okay. But that's what it is. Now, when you're making a decision, whatever decision you're making, you have to use a plumb line. To make sure you're going to get it right. The plumb line is the word of God. When you make a decision, you have to say with a decision, okay, hmm, should I go to this college or should I go to that college? What should I do with my life? Every decision you make, always consider who you are. Is the decision that I'm going to make going to affect my character? Because whose character are you? 
Jesus because he's the center of your heart. So if you're going to make a decision, is that decision going to come in? Is it going to change you for the better or for the worse? Is it, is it going to be healthy for you? Are you going to be breathing healthy air or are you going to be breathing contaminated air? It's real easy. It's real easy now. I said, glory, hallelujah. <laughs> it's real easy now because every decision you make, every decision, you have to level it. To what the word says. Everything. If you're watching a movie. And there's a, a, a sex scene in there. Level it with the word. What does the word say about that? Yes or no? Yes, yes. Okay. Do whatever you know that the word says. Change the channel. You can't find nothing? Turn it off. Read the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the level. The word of God is the plumb line. Is that awesome? The word of God is the plumb line. Yeah! We got something now to level our decisions, something to compare. Does it, to me, it seems easier now. I don't know about you guys, but to me, I, I can, I can uh, relate to it better. It's not that difficult. Because every time when they say, well, you've got, to, you've got a, a sound mind and, and this and that. Okay, well, to me, a sound mind means that I'm not, Duh! that's what a sound mind means to me. No, a sound mind means it's, it's a healthy mind. It's just your thoughts are healthy. Your thoughts are not evil. They're healthy. So that's what we put in our minds, healthy thoughts, not, not contaminated thoughts. Watch what you do. Watch what you read. All that because, ladies, we need to have our minds healthy so we could be of use to the master's hand. So we could be of use to his kingdom. We have to have our minds healthy so that we don't get sick. We're bringing all, all the, he, no wonder he says, think on these things, things that are good, things that are beautiful, things that are pure, Think on these things. He's saying, think, think. He says, give me your heart. Give me the feelings and the thoughts of your mind. Why does he want them? Because he knows that it's that that gets us in trouble. He knows how we are. He knows how he made us. He knows how he created us. He knows what makes us tick. So he's telling us. He's the author. He's, the, he's telling us. He's the creator. He's telling us. Everything that we need to know. Right? Okay. Um, right here on page 21, where it says, Paul knew. Paul knew that the ideas of being promoted by some of the Cretan believers were a bit off. He wanted Titus to snap a line and put things in order by ensuring that life and doctrine of the believers lined up plumb level and true with God's standard. And, and right here where it says Titus 1 8 9, I read that. And uh, and it says this. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have you turn to it because we I don't want to lose too much time, but in 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 um in Titus 1 9. Oh no. It was on the PowerPoint. Uh, well, look, I could, no, but I could use that one verse. No, it's one through nine, but I could use that one verse. He must hold firm and trustworthy words as taught so that he may be able to give instruction and sound doctrine and also rebuke those who contradict it. What does it say? Remember how you say, no, let's agree with everybody. Oh, no, let's agree with everybody. Everybody has their own doctrine. Everybody, No. No, 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 no. It says rebuke those who contradict it. I wish I had PowerPoint because I had underlined certain words that mean certain things, and I didn't have it in my notes. I have it in PowerPoint. But okay, so we'll move on. Okay, turn the page.
Okay, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth, John 17, 17. It says a plumb line. Scholars think that Paul wrote his pastoral letters to Titus and <clears throat> 1 Timothy shortly after being released from Roman imprisonment. Nero was the emperor <clears throat> on the throne. I'm going to skip all this because this is just talking about what, uh, how the history. So I'm just going to go down to what pertains to us. For it says, we don't know for sure if Paul, right there. We don't know for sure if Paul yet sensed that his life and ministry were near the end. But these letters appear to have a sense of urgency about them. In light of the looming persecution, it was critical that the churches were strong and healthy and that they had solid, established, mature leaders. Why? Because it was critical. Who do you think today is? It is very, very, very important that today we have spiritual, mature leaders that don't fall apart because they need to be strong for the babies. There's always, we're always going to have new believers. We're always, we have a baby believer right here, our sister. Uh, we prayed the sinner's prayer um, uh, over there at the retreat, our sister Debbie. Amen? Yes, yes. So she's a baby. We can, we can give her meat right now. She'll choke. So she has to come every day to learn a little bit here, a little bit there, and then I'm going to do a one-on-one -on -one disciple with her. But, but uh, which she's going to learn and she's going to grow. But we have to have strong leaders so that they can teach babies. In, this, in his letter to Titus, just as in the first letter to Timothy, Paul warned against false teachers and issued instructions, various groups regarding proper Christian what? Behavior. What? You mean we can't behave like the world? No, we can't behave like the world. Why? Because you're not like the world. Because you're not just anybody. Listen to me. You're royalty. You belong to a king, the king. That's who you are. You cannot behave like the world. He said, come out of her. Be different. Your attitude, your speech, your dress, all that has to display the character of God. Why? Why? Because if he's in you, that's what you're going to display. If he's not in you, you're going to say, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, and you're going to behave like the world, and guess what? The world's going to laugh at you. Because if he's in you, if he's living in you, why are you using foul language? Does he have foul language? If he is in you, why are you, are, are you always putting down people? Why are you? No, no, no. We're still the flesh. We still have a lot of our own character. He's working now. But the thing is, we have to let him work and be available for his hand to come in and mold us and show us and lead us and guide us to the way we should be. None of us are perfect. I, if I, I, I can tell, I tell you one thing. If you bring some water here in a tub, I can't stand on it. None of us are perfect. None of us are. But the more we learn about him, the more we learn of him, the more we change inside. Why? Because uh, when we learn something new, like I learned today, when we learn something new, guess what? It's something else that I bring to adorn. Remember? He's the center. Our character, our attitude, the way we behave, the way we talk, the way we dress, it, those are adornments that what? Complement the center. Amen? Amen. Amen. We, we have to, our behavior and all that has to complement the center of who you are. And that's Jesus. Amen?
Where was I? Oh, okay. Page 22 in the bottom. Okay. Paul wanted the churches to, uh, be, okay, to be sound in faith, Titus 1.13. Okay, I don't have the slides for that. And to use the right plump line to determine which ideas didn't line up with the sound doctrine. So any ideas that come, any things that come, line them up with sound doctrine. Line them up with sound doctrine. And we're going to find out what that is too. In Titus 1, 1 through 9, we learn that mature believers I wish, I'm sorry, I apologize again for the, for the PowerPoint, but I was going to go down with it. I can't. So we're going to go with it here. Okay. To learn that mature believers, this is what they have. Have a faith in the gospel of Christ Jesus. Uphold the Bible as a standard for truth. If you don't believe the Bible, don't say you're a Christian. Because the Bible is God breathed. It is the Word of God. It is God breathed. Regard the Word of God as trustworthy. Father God cannot lie. You can trust it. Honor the teachings of Christ and the apostles. You have to honor them, respect them. Know what accords or what agrees with sound doctrine. And are able to discern truth from error. A Christian should be able to discern truth from error. If Christ is leading you, if you are following the instructions that he's giving us, you are going to be able to discern what? The truth from error. Exhibit godliness of character and godly relationships. Oops. Exhibit godliness and character. We got that none. We know that. And godly what? Oh, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um, I got to hang around with them. Uh, they're my friends. They go out to the bars and stuff. But I got to hang around with them because I'm going to win them to the Lord. No, you're not. Come on now. No. If he's the center of your life, you're going to hang around with people that are like you. If you are truly a believer and if you truly say you're following Christ, then you're going to hang around with like-minded people. You can't say that you're a believer and hang around with worldly people. I'm not telling you not to talk to them. No, no, respect them, talk to them, but make Make sure that your vocabulary is healthy, that it's sound. It's not cursing. It not, it's not damning anybody. It's not hurting anybody. That your vocabulary be sound and healthy. You have to be healthy. We have to be healthy. Amen? Amen. On top of 23, Paul hoped that the men and women in Crete would hold firm to the trustworthy teachings of the faith. He anticipated that those who embraced sound doctrine would also be found in faith, sound in love, sound in steadfastness, sound in speech, and sound in all sorts of other things too. Sound, 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 sound. What does sound mean? Who said that? Healthy. 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 So when you see that word sound, all it is is healthy. That's all it is, healthy. Don't let it scare you. Don't let it sound. What is that? No, it's healthy. It's healthy. So in other words, it says he anticipated that those who embrace healthy teachings, because that's what doctrine is, teachings, would also, would also be uh, healthy in the faith. Healthy in love, healthy in steadfastness, healthy in speech, and healthy in all sorts of other things too. A deeper knowledge of truth leads to deeper godliness. Did you hear that? A deeper knowledge, in other words, the more you learn, the deeper knowledge of what? Truth. Not the deeper knowledge of 
Mohammed, not the deeper knowledge of the world, not the deeper knowledge of sports, not the deeper knowledge of designing, not the deeper knowledge, deeper knowledge of truth. The deeper knowledge of truth leads to deeper godliness. You want to put in 25%, you're going to get 25%. Godliness. Healthy beliefs lead to healthy behavior. The more you know about him, the more you're going to grow, the healthier you're going to think. And what you think, you what? Are. You are what you think. But you believe. That's who you are. So the healthier you're thinking, the healthier you're going to be. You're not going to be worried. You're not going to be anxious. Why? Because you believe the word of God. You believe that every word he says is true. So when you believe, you're going to walk in that belief. And that, sisters, is walking in victory. Walking in victory when you believe. Healthy beliefs lead to healthy behavior. Right thinking empowered by the Holy Spirit leads to right living. Right thinking leads to right living. Amen? Amen. Turn the page. Discern the difference. Discern the difference on the margin. Well, you know what? We'll just start from the top because I, I want to do that. In, in yesterday's lesson, well, what we just finished talking about, we learned that we believe about what we believe about the gospel and about the Bible is critically important, right? Mm -hmm. According to Paul, the word of God provides a plumb line. It establishes that there's a right way and a wrong way for Christians to think and behave. Some of its instructions are gender specific. And that means that some of them are for men and some for women. So it is also provide so it also provides a plumb line for womanhood. There's a right way and a wrong way for us to think and behave as women. And the word of God helps us discern the difference. So what's the plumb line, the word of God? Okay, right here in the margins, Ephesians uh, 5, 8 through 10 says, Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to who? The Lord. The Lord. Because when you do that and you're walking in the light, guess what? Even if you don't think so, or even if you don't see it, when you're walking in truth and you're walking in what you believe and you're walking in the light of Jesus, whether you like it or not, you shine. There's something different about you that the world sees. You may not recognize it in yourself, but others see it. That beautiful light, like that sister that glowed. Oh, I wish I could have taken it out, her out to, so you guys could see. She glowed. I mean, she glowed. Her beauty, she glowed. Ah. Hmm. I should have taken her out. <laughs> okay. Um, right here underneath where it says, uh, a true woman is characterized by... You, Okay, a true woman is characterized by right thinking. She is not swayed by every wind of doctrine that comes along. Do you hear that? A true woman is, of God is characterized by right or healthy thinking. She is not swayed by every wind of doctrine. In other words, there has been so many winds of doctrine. Remember that um, Satan put a little bit of truth with a lie and mixed it? Well, guess what? In the churches, they take a little bit of doctrine and they mix it with something else. And we believe it. We swallow it. Why? Because we trust the pulpit man instead of trusting the God man. 
It's not for them or me to teach you this and for you just to take it. Go into the word of God and study it and make sure that it aligns with the word of God. And it and I'm not worried, you know why? Because I dig in the Strong's, I dig in the Lexicon, and I dig in the Hebrew, I dig in the Greek, so that I make sure that what I'm presenting, if you go check, it's there. I want you to go check. Okay, for, that comes along. She has a heart of solid biblical teaching and has a growing knowledge of God's word. Because if you say you're a Christian and you tell somebody to do something, well, where does it say in the Bible? Uh, somewhere. You know, no. Let's learn. Let's learn the word of God. She knows how to evaluate what she hears to see if it measures up to the scripture. She knows how to evaluate what she hears to see if it measures up with scripture. In other words, what's she doing there? Plumb line. She's using the plumb line because she's hearing something and she's evaluating it. She said, hmm, that sounds kind of fishy. Let me go to the word of God. Let me take what they said and check it with the word of God and see if it aligns. And she knows how to live her life in a way that accords or agrees with healthy teaching, sound doctrine. The word accords in the Greek as prepo used here is significant. Its meaning, it means fitting and suitable, proper. A godly woman can sift through a multitude of options and identify which ones are proper, which fit, which, sound, which is healthy teaching or sound doctrine. She can determine which choices suitably, suitab suitably honor the Lord, and figure out which one is best, giving her particular what? Exactly. Not all of us have the same circumstances. Not all of us have the same lifestyles. So it, it, it's according to your, ha to your circumstance. You have to figure out which one fits you better. But it has to align to what? Because we're all making decisions, decisions, de decisions. Whenever we make a decision, we have to discern. If you peek at the dictionary to ha on, on page 25 at the bottom, if you, pe uh, if you peek at the dictionary to help, uh, you may have discovered that the English word discern comes from the French word discerner, which means to distinguish or separate. It's based on the Latin discernere, dis, dis, where's Rita? Discernere, yeah. Or dis, or off, away. Scenere is distinguish, distinct, to distinguish whether it's right or wrong. You distinguish, dis, evaluate it, and separate. So discernment means to what? To evaluate it and separate it. That's what discernment means, to evaluate the circumstances and then separate it. Is it good for me or is it bad for me? If you are worried, if you are worried and you're a woman of God, you know what the word says. Evaluate the circumstance you're going through. Evaluate it. Is the way I'm feeling is the way, I did it today, is the way I'm feeling, is the way that, is that according, does it plumb line to the word of God? No. Because he tells me the answer's for nothing. <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And you're able, and I was, it, it, I, I was able to let it go. It didn't happen. That's awesome. That's awesome, ladies. You understand what I'm saying? It's awesome. It's awesome. Okay. And we're going to stop right there. 
we could have gone to the next page, but we're going to stop right there because it's a little after 8. I want to stop at 8. Did we learn something? I'm sorry that we had so many complications. I apologize. But we got a good word. We got a good word. And I trust that you're learning. Is it, is it, we're bringing it, we're separating it, we're digging in, we're, we're um, dissecting it. We're dissecting it and, and applying it to our lives. And that's what we need to do. If you get just a little bit, so long as you get something. Okay? Okay. Let me, let me end with, who wants to uh, close with prayer? Any, okay. Okay.